Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight, the deputy prime minister defending his reputation today. We'll tell you why. Bahamians are being urged to delay holiday events to stay safe. Plus, the church aims to feed thousands for Thanksgiving. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Dragovich. Topping news tonight, Consultant Physician Staff Association President Dr. Sabriket Prinder Butler is tonight questioning the accuracy of the drastic drop in COVID-19 numbers and the number of tests being conducted. Kyle Joaquin has more. First of all, we hope that those numbers are a true reflection of what is happening. But we do know that we also are seeing less persons perhaps getting tested. With a slow reopening of the country's economy underway amid a drastic drop in numbers, the CPSA president says there is some doubt over how accurate those numbers are. We've gone from having triple digit confirmed cases in October to low figures like 11 and 19 daily. Pinda Butler says one must look at the number of people actually being tested. We expect that perhaps there may be less persons who are actually coming to get tested because we've been talking about it for so long they perhaps may assume that they have COVID or know someone who's had it and know what um, treatment was available to them and perhaps are doing those things at home as well. Looking closely at the numbers, over the past three days, the Ministry of Health reported the completion of 249, 279 and 347 COVID-19 tests daily. But compared to when the country saw a high daily number of confirmed cases in October, there were up to 700 tests being completed daily. We certainly know that even from clinic related to persons calling, that is certainly happening. And a lot of persons are still apprehensive about getting tested, whether that's because they don't want to uh, not work, because you know a lot of persons are still having financial constraints. Um, they still have a fear of a stigma. Health officials have stated there would be less testing with less confirmed cases as there are less contacts being traced. But as numbers continue to drop and things begin to reopen, there is the growing concern of gatherings and fears of a third wave, similar to what is being experienced in several other countries around the world. Various clubs that had a lot of persons together, various things happening on other islands, and we're not even at Thanksgiving week yet or Christmas. So can you imagine if those things happen, which is why even though we might be seeing numbers go down when we have those types of events, we now have super spread events happening, right, which is concerning. The CPSA president urged more Bahamians to practice more personal responsibility, particularly as we move into Thanksgiving and the holiday season. We must do what is in our own best interest, because if not, we are going to continue to have a similar fight and perhaps it could be even worse as it relates to our number of COVID cases in country. For our news, I'm Kyle Joaquin. Thanks, Kyle. Well, Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquist says he is appalled by false claims made against him in a recently filed writ. Turnquist is accused of being involved in alleged multi-million dollar fraud. However, he points out that he has not been named as a defendant in the case. Jared Higgs reports. Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquist vigorously denying what he called false claims made against him in a recently filed writ. Turnquist said in a statement, the writ does not name me as a defendant, but makes several allegations in its statement of claim that are categorically false. I deny these false claims. I am appalled that my standing as a public servant made calling my name in this dispute between my former business partners worthwhile. In the statement of claim, the two companies, Alpha Aviation Limited and Advance Aviation Limited, allege that Randy Butler, Sky Bahamas Airlines Limited and Aviation Oversight Group Limited, together with Turnquest, conspired wrongfully and with intent to injure those companies and or to cause loss to them by unlawful means and or to enrich themselves. Butler, Sky Bahamas and Aviation Oversight are named as the defendants. The court document states that Sky Bahamas and Aviation Oversight were at all material times companies owned and or controlled and or managed by Butler and Turnquest. 
The plaintiffs allege that Turnquest and the other conspirators dishonestly caused Alpha to pay away a total of $20,680,337.33 to Sky Bahamas, as in each case, some kind of bogus loan. It also alleges that Turnquest and Butler failed to keep or to ensure that the companies kept any or any adequate financial books of account or financial records recording and or documenting the company's financial transactions. In a statement last night, Turnquest said there is no room for that kind of misuse of our judicial system in our society. I am confident that the facts will defend my integrity once presented. My record of transparency and accountability in my private and public life is a matter of record and reputation. Butler also spoke to the Nassau Guardian. He says, I categorically deny all of those claims. I was the technical person at Sky Bahamas that dealt with regulatory technical matters. I am not an accountant. I did not work for Alpha and Advance, so I didn't have access to their accounts. I learned more in this statement of claim and other documents of who the players are and what seem to have been some of their goals. Reporting for our news, I'm Jared Higgs. Police have launched a major investigation into a $460,000 fraud matter involving the Public Hospitals Authority. The Financial Crime Investigations Branch said it wants to question 35-year-old Ricardo Davis in relation to fraud. Davis is described as having a dark brown complexion with a medium build and is 6 feet 2 inches tall. His last known address is Broom Street. If you know his whereabouts, police want you to contact them at 356-601. 9911 or 328 tips. And Bahamians reacting to advice from a top physician to delay Christmas celebrations to next year amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Dr. Nakia Forbes says while the holidays and gatherings are important to Bahamians, the harsh reality is people who are not wearing masks will be in close proximity during get-togethers, increasing the chance of the virus spreading. Bethany McDermott reports. Director of the Infectious Disease Program, Dr. Nikia Forbes, is advising Bahamians to delay Christmas celebrations this year despite a drop in COVID-19 cases. And so if we have the traditional holiday parties and the gatherings, it's going to increase the chance that persons will get COVID-19. And when we think about the elderly and the vulnerable, the grandparents, they will likely not do very well with COVID-19. They're more likely to have a severe course and they may end up losing their lives. And so it could be prudent to limit or reduce the numbers in terms of holiday celebrations this year. The Bahamas has been under a state of emergency from March 18th. Since then, the country has recorded more than 7,300 cases, with the majority of cases on New Providence and Grand Bahama. The holiday season is usually a festive time where families gather for dinners and parties to celebrate the Christmas holiday. Darren Sweeting, a father of six, says while he agrees that safety protocols should be adhered to, he will see his children and grandchildren this Christmas. The COVID-19 ain't have nothing to do with stopping me and my family and being have a wonderful Christmas. I will take a lot of measures this Christmas. I will be taking trips, going back to work and loving myself. I'd rather them do the family gatherings in their home and I'd rather... They should not cancel it because family means family. But not everyone agrees. I love my family. We always spend Christmas holidays together. But this year, I don't think it's going to happen like that. No, they say you can't. You can't. Why get locked up for something that you can work with? That's the procedures you have to do and respect it. And while Bahamians we spoke to gave mixed reactions on whether to have family gatherings this Christmas, they all say the COVID-19 pandemic has made preparing for the holiday a bit more difficult. I have sh completely shut down. You know, I, normally I would be all over town shopping for this and, you know, preparing, but it's, it's, it's totally different this year. Earlier this month, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis said Bahamians could have a good Christmas if they continue to adhere to safety protocols. On Wednesday, he announced he will seek Parliament's approval to extend the state of emergency to December 28th. Reporting for Our News, I'm Bethany McDermott. And just a day after, after the Ministry of Youth, Sports and Culture officially cancelled this year's Junkanoo Parades, it turns out next year's parades are up in the air as well. Junkanoo Corporation of New Providence Chairman Dion Miller says after speaking with the competent authority and given the months needed for Junkanoo preparation, it will be some time before a decision is made on whether there can be any Junkanoo Parades in 2021.
But the Prime Minister and I had an initial conversation about Chonkanusi's in 2021. Um, right now, it's still up in the air. We are thankful that by Easter, we'll have some sort of, 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 of a clear understanding of where we, where, 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 where we potentially will go with the John Canoe season for next year. Um, John Canoe has an advantage that it's in later in the year, and it has the disadvantage that we need months and months of prior um, advance to produce costumes and plan. And so certainly, as this year, I would say by July next year, you would definitely have a, a, a yes or a no. Health officials have deemed parades of any sort as super spreader events. Miller says as this is the first time in decades there will be no junk canoe, fans and junk canoers will have to do their part to ensure COVID-19 is under control for next year. We're keeping our fingers crossed and we're asking Bahamians to do what you must do to mitigate, help, help against the spread and mitigate so that next year we'll be in a better position to celebrate um, junk canoe and other cultural and sports, sports events here in the Bahamas. And it's a beautiful evening outside our studios. Here's Greg Thompson with our weather forecast. Thanks, Christina. I'm meteorologist Greg Thompson with your first look at weather. Outside the studios, breezy conditions continuing across the area, partly cloudy skies. Temperatures are in the upper 70s, 70, 79 degrees is our current temperature outside the studios. Those winds are out of the east, kicking up at 15 knots. Feels like temperature, 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Satellite view around the area, fair weather cumulus moving across the area. Front and boundary still hanging out near the southeast Palmas. Isolated showers associated with that frontal boundary. We expect that frontal boundary to dissipate as the evening goes on. That's your first look at weather. Your extended forecast is still to come. Thanks, Greg. Still to come on our news, police hit the streets of Freeport and Grand Bahama business owners concerned about the coming weeks. We'll tell you why when our news returns. Just when you thought the air would end drill, Rev came through with magic and holiday chair. Our cash back will double making more spirits rise with chances to spin and with a dope random prize. The rules are quite simple. You can find them online. Just sign up for Trio and pay your rev bill on time. Our grocery store dash is sure to bring smiles as 16 lucky winners tear through the aisles. Call 601-8992 or visit rev.vs slash promotions to find out how you can win with Rev's Feel the Magic giveaway. Rev, you and us, together. Boots on the ground in Grand Bahama today as senior police officers led an operation on the streets of Freeport to bring in wanted persons. Officer in charge ACP Ashton Greenslade says police were sending a stern warning to wanted persons to turn themselves in. If you're afraid to walk in the station, call the commanding officer and have him bring you in. But we need you to turn yourself into custody. If you don't, we're coming after you. And I guarantee you, by Monday morning, all of you who want it for criminal offenses will be in police custody. And we also want to warn the criminal element who are wanted by other islands in the Bahamas, including New Providence, not to come to Grand Bahama. ACP Greenslade added that Grand Bahama is not a soft or safe target for criminals to run to. He says wanted persons on other islands should turn themselves in instead of fleeing. Police say roadblocks have been very effective in deterring criminals as well as encouraging people to license their vehicles. Ticket poisons, onto side, side poisons who are in breach of the traffic laws and also the COVID-19 laws. We also searching suspected vehicles for dangerous drugs, firearms, and other contraband. We're also looking for wanted poisons, poisons who are wanted by the police and who are being hiding out. We hope to surprise them this morning with this operation and bring them into custody. Well, as COVID-19 cases on Grand Bahama continue to rise, business owners fear the island could see tighter restrictions impacting their bottom line. Georgia Bain reports. As Grand Bahama recorded an additional seven cases on Thursday, inching closer to the 1,000 mark, some business owners on that island fear that the rise in cases could result in tighter restrictions. Alex Thompson, who owns Signature Choices and is a board member of the Freeport Business Association, says another lockdown is not the way to go, especially with businesses still trying to recover from Hurricane Dorian and the COVID-19 pandemic. I don't think a lockdown is necessary. I hope we don't have it. I wish, fingers crossed, that it doesn't happen. And it is a concern to me because it stops commerce, period. 
And we're going to have to learn to live with COVID-19. It's not going away anytime soon. So you cannot continue to have lockdowns perpetually because they're non effective. Meanwhile, taxi driver Ivan Palacios says business is so slow, he only makes enough to feed himself and relies mostly on government assistance. Yesterday was no business. Today, little, no, you know. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get a fear for $10, you have to go for five. I think the government <laughs> have tried their best, but, you know, people still will complain, but, you know, they have tried their best and they, they give us some assistance. Thank God for that. <laughs> We'd have been up in the creek yeah. without a paddle. Grand Bahama has recorded about 200 cases this month. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis told Parliament on Wednesday that an industrial site at the center of the recent spike in cases on that island has been closed and a meeting will be held this week to analyze the outbreak. The last time Grand Bahama saw a spike in COVID-19 cases, it was placed under a lockdown that ended up being extended. Thompson, who specializes in garments for weddings and parties, says this is the slowest she's seen business in 15 years. It has been a struggle. It has been because, therefore, we cater to funerals, we cater to weddings and brass parties. We can't have these events, no social distancing. We also cater when there's balls. There's no big dinners, there's no big events, so no one's buying shapers to lift it and tuck it. Resident Ricardo Culmer says he fears that if businesses are forced to close once again, the island could see a rise in crime. If you have a lot of people getting sick and the business have to close down, there's going to be no jobs. And then what's going to happen is the crime is going to increase, which in has to increase already because businesses are not able to operate properly. And what's going to happen is the country is going to fall down. Reporting for our news, I'm Georgie O'Bain. Thanks, Giorgio. Still to come, a local church aims to feed 3,500 people in need for Thanksgiving. The details when our news returns. Just when you thought the year would end drill, Rev came through with magic and holiday chair. Our cash back will double making more spirit tries with chances to spin and with a dope random prize. The rules are quite simple. You can find them online. You sign up for Trio and pay your Rev bill on time. Our grocery store dash is sure to bring smiles as 16 lucky winners tear through the aisles. Call 601-8992 or visit rev.bs slash promotions to find out how you can win with Rev's Field of Magic giveaway. Rev, you and us, together. This is our news. Welcome back. It's an initiative designed to inspire faith, hope, and love. A local church will be feeding 3,500 people on Thanksgiving Day. Pastor of United Faith Ministries, Falman Ferguson, says he wants Operation Thanksgiving to inspire people, even in these uncertain times. I have no questions to ask as to where they're coming from. If they are in need, they're coming here next week, Thursday, beginning at 11 a.m., uh, they're going to be on the grounds. As a matter of fact, we shall have a live service at 9 a.m., a service of thanksgiving, and a word I'm going to preach, a sermon, seven reasons to give thanks. And then at uh, 11 a.m., we'll begin serving that hot meal all day long. Pastor Ferguson says he wants to be a blessing to those who are hurting. The church usually sells dinners for Thanksgiving, but as the pandemic has resulted in job losses, Pastor Ferguson says they decided to change that. He estimates they have just half of what they need for next week's initiative and are looking for partners to assist. And we still need our social partners to participate. And of course, we say to the general public, those of you you know, you're able to give something, and no matter how sm small it is. If you have, uh, think about that person that doesn't have. Think about that person who is hungry. And you know, Thanksgiving has become now a tradition in the Bahamas where everybody looks for that Thanksgiving meal. But can you imagine the inability to afford? So we're saying to, to all those out there, if God has blessed you to have an extra bit, then share it with someone. And in sports, Thursday night football setting up an exciting weekend in the NFL. Marcellus Hall has more. Welcome to our sports on a Friday, everybody. I'm Marcellus Hall. I hope you guys enjoyed our edition of The Locker Room, which came your way earlier. Looking forward to seeing what we got for you next week. Let's start you off with some football tonight, as of course, Thursday night football kicking off week number 11. Let's take a look at those highlights and set you up for what's coming up on Sunday. Seattle Seahawks, Arizona Cardinals going at it on a Thursday night as week 11 of the NFL season got underway. Seahawks striking first as DK Metcalf 
getting a 25-yard reception from Russell Wilson. That puts Seattle up 7-0 early on. Kenyon Drake, second quarter now, as he gets in on a two-yard run. Score tied at 7 to pieces. Arizona bounces back. Now into the second quarter as well. Tyler Lockett, an 11-yard catch from Russell Wilson. 13-7 as the point after attempt fails. And the Seahawks, though, with a one with a six-point lead. After adding a field goal, they go into the half with a score 16-7 in favor of the Seahawks. Third quarter action, Dan Arnold gets a four-yard pass from Kyler Murray. That makes it a 14-16 game in favor of Seattle. Touchdown would be answered quickly as Carlos Hyde on a two-yard run puts him up 23-14. Seahawks in control in the fourth quarter. Chase Edmonds, three-yard pass from Kyler Murray makes it a 23-21 game, a two-point margin. And then, of course, the uh, Seahawks get a force safety that puts him up 25 to 21. They would come up with a big sack to end the game, and that would be the foul margin 28 to 21 as the Seahawks get an all-important win to take the lead in their division. Taking a look now at what's ahead as their Sunday schedule comes up for you as Week 11 continues. That's your check on sports here this Friday. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Looking forward to seeing you right back here on Monday. Until then, I'm Marcellus All for our sports. Thanks, Marcellus. Our weekend weather outlook, that's coming up when our news returns. This is a huge deal. NFL Sunday Ticket is back only with Rev Trio. All day football, all day Sunday. Enjoy all the benefits of Trio with a huge extra. Never miss a game with NFL Sunday Ticket included in your Rev Trio bundle. All you have to do is opt in. TV, phone, and internet starting at just $99. Call 601-8992 to sign up now. Visit www.rev.bs slash promotions for details. Welcome back to our news. What does the weekend have in store for us? Here's Greg back in the weather studio. Thanks again, Christina. In our second look at weather, we take a look at our satellite around the area. High pressure remains in charge, generating some hazardous boating and beaching conditions across the area. Frontal boundary near the southeast palm is still generating a couple isolated showers in that vicinity. We expect the winds to fall off as the high pressure relaxes into the weekend. Your boating forecast for all areas tonight through tomorrow, those winds will be out of the northeast to east at 15 to 20 knots. Seas four to six feet near shore, but they will be up to eight feet offshore in some moderate to large northeasterly swells. Here's a look now at your national forecast. A look now at your extended forecast through Wednesday. That's a look at our weather. Make a great night and a safe weekend, everybody. Thanks, Greg. Get your popcorn ready. There's another great lineup of movies right here on RTV this weekend. Here's a sneak peek. RTV is bringing movie night to your home with Hallmark holiday favorites and Sony blockbuster movies. Love is ripe for the picking with Harvest Love beginning at 8 p.m. on Saturday after our news weekend. Sometimes love shows up where you least expect it. You're not from around here, are you? You can't just go picking other people's fruit. On Sunday, it starts with Christmas Connection at 2 p.m., the RTV Sunday matinee. When a holiday vacation takes an unexpected detour. Hi, Sydney. Then a city girl moves to the country and finds love in Harvest Moon. Oh, oh. You all right, mister? About losing your place. That kicks off Sunday at 8 p.m., followed by Christmas Getaway at 9.30. Then Monday night is for action with Sony Blockbuster, The Born Identity at 9.30. He has the skills you, stop right there. of a dangerous man. That begins following our news on Sunday night. Then the late night movie will make you jingle around the clock beginning at 9.30 p.m.
That's a pretty good lineup. Well, thank you for joining us for our news tonight. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Christina Dragovich. Join us tomorrow night for our news weekend. Have a beautiful evening, Bahamas.